with us Thanks for having this us. morning. Whether or not it has been dosed really is open for interpretation. There was so much talk after President Obama was elected that we were now in this post-racial America, which clearly this past week shows that's not the case. And why does this keep happening? Uh, I, I don't think it has been post-racial for a second with this administration. I mean, as your package just showed, you had the president calling Sergeant Crowley, saying he was acting stupidly. You just up to now, you had this, um, you know, them not prosecuting the new Black Panthers on the grounds that they won't prosecute a vote, voting rights case against blacks. You had Sonia Sotomayor because calling, saying she was a wise Latina and ruling against white firemen um, who didn't get promotions because of their race. I mean, it's been nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. But why? Um, I think we found out from the journal list this week, in large part, and that is liberal journalists, a hundred, hundreds of them, um, ch chit-chatting about how to protect Obama, and and you know they're openly saying we're in trouble. We need to distract from what's going on. Let's just randomly call a conservative racist. So liberals I, use I, this all the time to distract from what's going on. Tony, I'm guessing that you don't agree with that speaking, assessment at all. <laughs> speaking of distractions, I find it very ironic. I mean, with all due respect to Anne, uh, to get a lecture on. Race relations from someone who said that Jews need to be perfected but moving past that I think when you look at this incident let's not get distracted from what happened a woman uh, whose father was murdered by a white farmer uh, for which there was never any indictment any prosecution was telling a story about racial redemption and what we saw happen on the right uh, Andrew Breitbart and others really ran with this story and look I expect doctor journalism I suspect I, I expect selective editing um, from the Breitbart's and the Hannity's uh, what I think was, is really problematic here is that what you're seeing is that the mainstream press is sort of being cowed by this right-wing journalism so you've got folks on the right making these things up taking things out of context and then saying gosh darn it why isn't the rest of the media reporting on this and then people jump on that and this poor woman was crucified for two days until we found out what really happened. How much of that, though, is either side? Because these things happen on both sides. It's not just one side or the other, kowtowing to another side. How much of it, the fact that we live in a society where everything is so immediate and that people don't take the time they need to to check the facts? Yeah, I would contest that it happens on both sides. Um, things taken out of context. Um, I never said Jews need to be perfected. I accurately described the New Testament. Um, how about the photo? As MSNBC is describing white men bringing guns to Obama rallies, where they only show the gun, you don't see it's a black man with the gun. Center for American Progress this week, run by John Podesta on Obama's transition team, shows an alleged Nazi at a tea party announcing, I'm a racist, I'm but a and, proud and racist. things like this happen you on both sides. Back, on Fox News, they we, saw, we saw footage that was ran months ago, purportedly showing certain crowds at rallies, and they were from a different event. This happens across the board. Um, and you pull back from the Center for American Progress, and it's all, it's all tea party. You're saying, go home you're not one of us. You have CBS News rep itself has reported that John Lewis was called the N-word 15 times. That is a lie. That is a despicable lie. That never happened. Why doesn't CBS News apologize so for that? When there's this constant back and forth on both sides, is there any way to resolve it and to get a conversation going? Certainly. I mean, I think that the, we have to depend on, it really depends on who's trying to have the conversation. Uh, I think that there are plenty of well-meaning Americans who do want to try to deal with the issue of race in a responsible way without the name calling, without trying to defend uh, racism on either side. And I think that it's really a, ma it's a matter of having that conversation in a respectful and productive way and in a productive forum. Well, I appreciate you both coming in to have the Thank conversation you. Thank this you. morning. Ann Coulter, Tanya Acker. Miss Ann Coulter is back with a new book called Mugged, where she claims that President Obama has abandoned black Americans and that the O.J. Simpson verdict was a great thing for America. Please welcome the very controversial Miss Ann Coulter. Ann. you to tell me what you're trying to say in this book because uh, we don't know what you're trying to say <laughs> what i'm trying to say is um race mongering has been very bad for america liberals use it to promote causes that have nothing to do with blacks and in fact harm blacks and the, that excellent lead-in you just gave about um oj i mean i think that was the moment having lived near new york city in the 70s and 80s which was the golden era it was like trayvon martin and duke lacrosse case every day with the oj verdict 
White America said that's it. The white guilt bank is shut down, and that ended up being the best thing that ever happened what are you to mean? Black what are you America. Talking about? I, don't I know meant what you that mean. no longer. Was being acquitted was was good for who? Yes, because you had millions of white people watching, with the equivalent of what in New York we used to refer to as the Brooklyn juries, who simply would not convict even guilty black criminals, oh, um, not well, innocent black Hold criminals. Hold up, Miss Coulter. Please yes. stop. Please stop. <laughs> if you're gonna talk about race. At least, at least know what you're talking about. At least know what you're talking about. Well, tell me how much you know about being black. Well, this isn't and about black, being black. Well, but you just said, this is, you just made all these statements about how black people feel. Tell oh, me I how you know. know. Yeah, you did. This is not a book about black people. Uh -huh. It is a book about white liberals. And I do know, and this is a fact, that uh -huh. once for years, Republican policies on crime and welfare, for example, were called uh -huh. racist. When they finally got implemented, after the OJ verdict, I might add, by Giuliani, crime Giuliani in New York, Reagan and Bush judges overall, uh -huh. Tens of thousands of black lives were saved. That is a fact. I don't have to know about how to I about being black. black. You you but I know because you you're, be you're, alive you're, and to be dead. You're, 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 what is, what are your facts are a little, just a little shaky. I mean, you're saying that because black people, because <laughs> liberals are, are what? Because liberals have abandoned black people now because... What? I, I don't no, get it. I don't understand. You, I don't think liberals ever cared about black people. I mean, five minutes after the Civil Rights Act of 64, they start calling everything that has nothing to do with black people a civil rights Wait issue. Wait Abortion on man. demand, homeless rights. So are you uh, saying, are you saying that saying liberals don't care about black people? Then are you saying Republicans embrace us in a warm, <laughs> fuzzy <laughs> Try to. We're not embraced back. Back, yeah, we tried to. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So the Southern strategy was a white liberal thing? No, it was a Republican Western. thing. No. And, and also, uh, no, Newt Gingrich calls President Obama the food stamp president. Food. That's not racist? This chapter. Well, wait a well, second. You know, that, do you really think that was, do you believe it was racist for Newt to say, that the president is a food stamp president. Well, well, he wouldn't say into that. If we could just skip, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Newt, so if we could just skip that for a second sure. and get to the Southern strategy, yeah. because I, I've specifically disproved it. It's an absolutely liberal folklore. Um, Republicans were winning the South since 1920. It was the outer states of the South. It was Texas, Tennessee, Black Kentucky, were Virginia. Voting. What are you talking about? We weren't well, allowed who to was vote. Trying to get them to vote? Republicans were, yeah, and, the first, and the first and the first Congress, Black Congressmen were all Republicans, and the wait, first Black wait, Governor wait, was a Republican. About Thurman? way back, Trump after is so different from yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. That's, that is and definitely hey. what we're told. Uh -huh. But in fact, the black, the, right. the Democratic segregationists were all liberal Democrats. It is a lie that they were conservative everybody Democrats. Was it was a Jay. segregationist, darling. And then, you know, the basically, they everybody was. Yeah. White people were. It didn't matter whether they were Republicans or not. Oh. Ask you a question. The first segregationist. Oh. Just Sorry. read chapter 14 in this book. The first Republican you know, was to be elected in the South. Listen to my grandmother, was who was Baker. there, who remembers what Howard happened. Howard Baker, uh, an aggressive integrationist, first Republican voted, elected in Tennessee to the Senate. You have Winthrop Rockefeller, first Republican governor in Arkansas. But in, you know, I have a question Arkansas. about today. Let me ask you something about what's yeah, going yeah. on now. It seems to me, the Southern strategy is a lie. It seems to me that voter there. suppression... Yeah is happening in the areas where black people and Hispanics are, and they really is being promoted by the Republicans, not no. the Democrats. So in my view, and I have a different one from you, it looks as though the Republicans are really going against blacks, not the liberals. No, and this what is a perfect that? example. Oh, yes, it is, and it's a perfect oh. example. No, I'll explain why, of, of liberals using the label of civil rights to promote a liberal cause they support, i.e. voter fraud. In fact, one of the first states in the union to pass voter ID was Rhode Island, 85% Democratic legislature, and who pushed it? A black Democrat in the can, House, a black talk, Democrat you know, in the Senate. You're, you're you're that's, not, that's a fact. No, you, yeah. you may pick out Rhode that's Island, but there are other about. states where it's completely Why Republican black driven. Democrats be pushing this? Because they had seen because voter they fraud. Because they want the Hispanic vote to go to Rhode Island. Can I ask a general question? <laughs> Every book that that's you write... Funny. Is very controversial and shocking, and it's usually an opinion that's disparate with everybody else. Right, right. Do you just write these books and try to find whatever it is that's going to make everybody say? Oh. Well, do you believe this question? 
track. Yeah. The reason, it's an excellent question. The reason I write these books is because I try to correct things that people believe that are just false. This is a lot but This is a question, because I was reading a book. And, and, and you're the only and, one and, that says it, but... but the, well, there are a few things, I mean, the, discovering that we never won the Goldwater states and Republicans didn't won, win the Dixiecrat states until the Dixiecrats died out. You keep standing back in the past. you got to come into the present. But this is what I want to say. That's new to me. The rest of it, other people know. In reading your book, you know, you, you, you keep saying, if you, read, if you would read chapter 14, if you read, you, you make such divisive comments and incendiary comments and hateful comments at times, it makes people not want to pick up your book and read it. So how people so. I agree with her, read it. Yeah, well, people oh, agree yeah. with her. No, I don't think saying, so. You know, name a hateful comment in no, here. I, you know, when you talk about you stay in the past, I, that, that Republican No, only because there. it was brought up. There's only one chapter on the past, and I mean, it's just a but fact. But when you talk about something like voter suppression, yeah. which right. obviously is trying to keep black people and Republicans Latinos... they have never done that. That was a oh, Democrat in, thing. But, but, and it's in states where they had, they don't even have hey, we, any... Stop. Let, let me just... Okay. Can I just say one, one thing, Dan? No matter what... You Hello everyone! Hey, I'm just stopping by to remind you that liberals are insane! <laughs> Social justice warriors are becoming more violent and triggered than ever before! Anyways, be sure to subscribe to KGP TV on YouTube and have a blessed day! Yeah, man! of editing um, from the Breitbarts and the Hannity's. Uh, what I think was, is really problematic here is that what you're seeing is that the mainstream press is sort of being cowed by this right-wing journalism. So you've got folks on the right making these things up, taking things out of context, and then saying, gosh darn it, why isn't the rest of the media reporting on this? And then people jump on that, and this poor woman was crucified for two days until we found out what really happened. How much of that, though, is either side? Because these things happen on both sides. It's not just one side or the other. Kowtowing to other side. How much of it, the fact that we live in the society where everything is so immediate and that people don't take the time they need to to check the facts? Yeah, I would contest that it happens on both sides. Um, things taken out of context. Um, I never said Jews need to be perfected. I accurately described the New Testament. Um, how about the photo as MSNBC is describing white men bringing guns to Obama rallies where they only show the gun. You don't see it's a black man with the gun. Center for America. with us Thanks for having this us. morning. Whether or not it has been dosed really is open for interpretation. There was so much talk after President Obama was elected that we were now in this post-racial America, which clearly this past week shows that's not the case. And why does this keep happening? Uh, I, I don't think it has been post-racial for a second with this administration. I mean, as your package just showed, you had the president calling Sergeant Crowley, saying he was acting stupidly. You just threw up to now. You had this, um, you know, them not prosecuting the new Black Panthers on the grounds that they won't prosecute a vote, voting rights case against blacks. You had Sonia Sotomayor because calling, saying she was a wise Latina and ruling against white firemen um, who didn't get promotions because of their race. I mean, it's been nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. But why? Um, American Progress this week, run by John Podesta on Obama's transition team, shows an alleged Nazi at a Tea Party announcing, I'm a racist, I'm but a and, proud and racist. things like this happen you on both sides. On Fox News, we saw, we saw footage that was ran months ago, purportedly showing certain crowds at rallies, and they were from a different event. This happens across the board. Um, and you pull back from the Center for American Progress, and it's all it's all Tea Party. You're saying, go home, you're not one of us. You have you CBS said. News rep itself has reported that John Lewis was called the N-word 15 times. That is a lie. That is a despicable lie. That never happened. Why doesn't CBS News apologize so when for that? When there's this constant back and forth on both sides, is there any way to resolve it and to get a conversation going? Certainly. I mean, I think that the, we have to depend on, it really depends on who's trying to have the conversation. Uh, I think that there are plenty of well-meaning Americans who do want to try to deal with the issue of race in a responsible way without the name calling, without trying to defend uh, racism on either side. And I think that it's really a, ma it's a matter of having that conversation in a respectful and productive way and in a productive forum. Well, I appreciate you both coming in to have the conversation this you. morning. And Coulter, Tanya Acker. Ms. Ann Coulter is back.
with a new book called Mugged, where she claims that President Obama has abandoned black Americans and that the O.J. Simpson verdict was a great thing for America. Please welcome the very controversial Miss Ann Coulter. Ann. <laughs> you to tell me what you're trying to say in this book because uh, we don't know what you're trying to say <laughs> what i'm trying to say is um race mongering has been very bad for america liberals use it to promote causes that have nothing to do with blacks and in fact harm blacks and the, that excellent lead-in you just gave i think we found out from the journal list this week in large part and that is liberal journalists a hundred hundreds of them um, ch chit chatting about how to protect obama and and you know they're openly saying we're in trouble we need to distract from what's going on let's just randomly call the conservative racist so liberals I, use I, this all the time to distract from what's going on Tanya, I'm guessing that you don't agree with that speaking assessment of, at all. <laughs> speaking of distractions, I find it very ironic, I mean, with all due respect to Anne, uh, to get a lecture on race relations from someone who said that Jews need to be perfected. But moving past that, I think when you look at this incident, let's not get distracted from what happened. A woman uh, whose father was murdered by a white farmer, uh, for which there was never any indictment, any prosecution, was telling a story about racial redemption. And what we saw happen on the right, uh, Andrew Breitbart and others really ran with this story. And look, I expect doctor journalism. I suspect, I, I expect select.